Hello, my name is Bhagwan Chaudhary. I'm a professor of finance at the Indian School of Business, ISB. Today I'm speaking with Professor Apoorva Javdekar, my colleague here at ISB. Uh, at ISP, we are starting a new initiative called Jumpstart India at ISP, where the idea is that a faculty would work with students who are coming in to work on problems of national importance. Um, this would involve many activities, one of which is monitoring the health of the corporate sector. So today's talk is in that line. We know that many banks make loans that go bad and they become non-performing assets, but it takes a while before we know that they become non-performing assets. And in the meanwhile, banks are allowed to make loans anyway. And because they know that they are bankrupt, they end up doing even more riskier things. And that causes the problems to go further. Now, if we could identify how bad the situation was in time, perhaps the intervention could come much earlier. So today, Apurva is going to talk about one indicator he has created, which allows us an early sign of loan quality before it becomes really bad. Apurva, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Bhagwan. Okay. So tell us about uh, what this idea is. Uh, so as you rightly pointed out, uh, the typical measure people use to look if the health of the banking sector or the health of the corporate sector is good or bad is to look at the non-performing assets or the NPAs. Uh, but as you rightly pointed out, NPAs takes a while to uh, show signs of stress. And by that time, it it is probably too late for policy intervention or for government to effectively act and resolve the situation. So the idea here is very simple. Instead of looking at the bank's balance sheet, I'm going to look at the corporate balance sheet or the balance sheets of the companies who are borrowing because they file the uh, balance sheets or the financial statements say every quarter or at least annually. And that, uh, allows us to track which companies are borrowing in the economy, which companies are deleveraging in the economy, are these companies good or bad. And this effectively allows us to track the quality of uh, credit in the economy. And we can see if banks are lending if indirectly to good companies or bad uh, companies through this approach. So that's the whole idea. And I have created a very simple index looking at the balance sheets of the companies through this methodology, which is just a first attempt. It can be improved in multiple ways, but I think I've got some interesting findings just looking at the corporate balance sheets. So I think this is a very intuitive idea. Um, in Rajasthan, where I grew up, they always used to say that if you want to know a man's character, so what you're saying is if banks are making bad loans, let's look at who they have lent to. And if those are in trouble, you know that the bank must be in trouble too. And that's a very simple idea. And you're saying that because the borrowers themselves are following, are uh, filing these income statements and balance sheets on a regular basis, you can get an early sign here. Okay, show us what you Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so this is, this is the real time credit quality index. And let me give you a little bit of motivation uh, that led me to uh, create this index. So credit here, I mean uh, bank loans or the capital companies raised through the bond markets or some other medium, uh, not equity. So anything other than equity is what I'm including here because uh, from the balance sheets, I won't be able to see which component is exactly the bank debt and which component is non-bank debt. But primary source of credit in India for most of the corporates is bank credit. So I'm, I'm hopeful that I'm tracking uh, bank credit uh, in large part. And good credit is a very important barometer of economic health, as we all know, because that shows that banks are healthy enough to lend and that shows that firms have good demand uh, for credit so they can take the loans and they have projects to invest in. Uh, but what gets neglected often is the quality of credit. People just look at the growth of credit or how much credit is getting disbursed in the economy, but hardly anyone tracks quality of credit. 
And believe it or not, but in India, I could find only one index that tracks something similar, but which tracks only bond markets. And I just, I, I just pointed out that bond market is a very small fraction of the total credit that gets uh, allocated in our country. And yeah. so what we really need is to go to the bank uh, lending. And this is what my index is going to allow us to do. And this is important because banks are going to disclose non-performing assets only with some delay and zombie lending, which is keeping keep, like keep on lending to bad firms to repay the original loans. That yeah. sort of a zombie lending is going to exacerbate the delay in recognitions of NPS. And there is a very nice so paper. By the, leaders, the idea of zombie lending is, you know, that you're in trouble, but in order yes. to make it looked like you're not in trouble. What I do is I'll lend you the amount you owed me plus the interest you were supposed to pay me. So it makes the problem even worse. Yes, exactly. And the, and this delays the inevitable, but by that time you have lost the policy window in which you can act. That's the whole problem. Yeah. And, and the other motivation is coming from some academic research by C and Clino. It's a very influential paper. And they have shown that for China and India, uh, if merely reallocating the productive resources from unproductive firms to the productive firms can increase our productivity by 80% or even 100%. Uh, and that's a huge, huge which is potential, huge. which is and huge, which is a lost potential if you just keep your capital stuck with bad firms. And I think the intuition there is that if the firm is bad, it's in, let's say, close to bankruptcy, their incentives are misaligned to take excessive risks, even though those are Absolutely. not good projects. But if the firms are sound, they're going to take good projects that are actually profitable. And that perhaps is what is causing this huge difference in productivity that, that fails yes. in our seeing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, so this is the idea that motivates me to come up with this index. And so let me go straight to the point yeah and the point is have we lent to the good firms and you can define firms as good or bad on multiple metrics here i'm using one metric which is interest cover ratio uh, this just tells you if the company is able to pay uh, the interest cost back to the banks on a regular basis so are you earning enough to pay back your bankers on uh, annual basis or on quarterly basis uh, and, and companies with higher interest coverage ratio are healthy companies with low interest cover ratio are not doing that well, obviously. And so this is one way I can categorize the firms, which I have done here. Yeah. And what, yeah. And what I'm tracking through time now is what fraction of total credit in the economy is going to each of these type of companies. Okay. A red line, a red line is telling you that the credit is red line uh, follows the credit going to the bad companies and green line to the good companies. And you can see that the, the, there are two things here. First thing is the credit even before 2008 crisis, which is depicted in this uh, gray uh, area, even before that, the fraction of credit that was going to the good companies is hardly around 15 to 20% of the total which is in my opinion, too low in number. One can do this formally for us economies or for some of the advanced economies, but this number ought to be very large for these type of economies compared to what we are seeing here. So that's a first sign that we are not lending to the companies we should be lending. Uh, so that's the, that's the first sign you want to pick up from here. And the second interesting, uh, uh, finding coming out of this graph is after 2008 crisis, there has been a sharp divergence in where the credit is going Fine. in credit going to high interest coverage ratio firms. And there is a increase in the amount of credit going to the red line, which is the low interest coverage ratio firms. Yes. Yes. And, 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 sorry, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I said the difference is very, very stark by the time you reach 2015 and after that as well. Yes, absolutely. And, and you can see that in 2014, when RBI started to do a lot of 
reforms in terms of asset quality uh, reviews or recognition programs, restructuring programs. Till that time, zombie lending was rampant, allowed them to uh, allowed banks to lend to these bad companies, and we were at 25% of our credit was stuck with these bad companies, and only five or seven percent of our credit was going to good quality companies. That's a that's a very very serious economic situation. And there has been some reversal after some of the reforms RBI has taken and after the new government came into picture. But uh, still the, the amount of the lending that should go to the green line or to the good companies is still miserably low in our economy. That's, that's the point coming out of this graph. Okay, very clear. Okay. And, and this is not just true for one metric. I do exactly the same thing, but for the other metric, which is return on asset, what's the profitability for the company? How much return companies are making on their assets? And you can see similar trend. Credit going to companies which have low return on assets. Yeah. So that's exactly like uh, good versus bad company classification, right. but using other metrics. So this is uh, and the then, measure so, of good versus bad company, right? The first one was showing... Yes. Uh, whether or not they will be able to pay back their loans, which is what the interest coverage ratio was. This is saying, what is the return on assets these companies are earning? And you find that companies that have high return on assets, only a tiny amount of credit is going to those firms. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so the picture is clear that bad companies are sucking up the credit. Good companies are not getting the credit in our company, in our country. So that's a very serious, uh, serious situation from any, okay. I mean, from any uh, perspective. And then the, the one other interesting thing we can look at is what fraction of total corporate assets, which is sort of a productive assets are held by good companies versus bad companies. And you can see that in, 2004 5, um, roughly 40 45% of the assets were with good companies, the yeah. green line. Mm -hmm. And that has secularly come down from good number of 45% to now just over 20%. 20% yes. uh, in, and that's a huge decline. If only 20% of the corporate assets are with good firms, I think your productivity of corporate sector is going to be tremendously low. Okay. What is the, I, I've seen something interesting in the red line where I see a secular increase um, uh, from 2000 to 2016 and then there's a sharp decline. Yes. Uh, I think because by that time, and this will be clear in the next draft, by that time banks had to recognize so many non-performing assets on their books that it was, I think, even inevitable for them to stop lending to these bad firms. Nice. Uh, but, but, but then credit, what this graph is showing is credit is not going to good companies and it yeah. is not going to bad companies. So basically, uh, some middle segment companies are taking up some credit, uh, but somehow the, the allocation is still not uh, uh, very efficient of the credit in our economy. Okay. But at least there is some improvement from 18% of the assets being stuck in bad companies. Now, in last three years, we have come down to 8% or something like that. So that's some improvement, but we would like the green line to go up. Yeah. Uh, and that, that takes me to my last slide, which yeah. is comparing, comparing my index with a typical indicator, which is non-performing assets. And I'm going to claim that looking at NPA is not such a great uh, thing to do if you are a policymaker. So the, uh, so the purple line here is measuring NPA. NPA is. The yes. red line is your index? Is my index. It's the same, uh, same graph from earlier. The fraction of credit which is stuck with the bad companies or the companies with low uh, interest cover ratios. Yeah. Uh, and and you, you can see. saying that you could predict in 2015, for example, that there is going to be trouble and NPA sure. take at least five more years before we learn that from NPA. Is that the correct reading from the graph? Yes. Yes. So there are two readings. Uh, you, what you said is absolutely correct. So let me, so uh, even before 2008, there is a sharp divergence in what my index is doing and what NPAs are doing. NPAs were going down uh, from early 2000s to mm -hmm. around financial crisis time. But at that time, the red line was still marginally going up, not very 
at a very steep pace, but still it is going up. And yes. uh, so, so if you were just to look at NPAs to say that everything is very nice in the economy, banks are doing good. That's it's not, not the correct reading, perhaps, because okay. we were not put. Yeah. So that is one thing. And yeah. after 2008 crisis, the red line started to go up with a greater uh, steepness. And you could have picked this up in 2010, for example, when the credit going to bad companies went up from, say, 15% to 20%. But you see the NPA line, the blue line uh, in 2010, it was flat from 2008 to 2011. Then it increased marginally. The real pickup in NPAs came only after 2014, when the asset quality reviews and the stress testing, everything was introduced by RBI. But by that time, you had already been very late in the cycle because most of the bad lending had already happened, done and dusted. So as a policy, you were five very, years late. Very insightful because it's showing, first of all, not only that NPA is late, the flat part of NPA saying is that it is hiding everything. It's not telling us anything because NPAs have not been recognized and these problems are already there, but nobody's able to notice them. This is an incredibly insightful graph. Uh, yeah, so, so even the first attempt to construct something like that uh, has given us some very, very nice insights. And I personally liked uh, this graph myself. Uh, so, so I'm hopeful that using some of the uh, other data sets, which can allow me to do this at a more frequent, uh, fre I mean, a more frequently or use the larger data sets, I think one can come up with a better um, and improved version of this index, though the first attempt is yielding you some, some nice insights and, and hopefully it can help policymakers pick up the science uh, very early. So Apurva, this is uh, quite promising. What you're showing is that even the first attempt is giving us a lot of insights. And as we get more data, we'll be able to get even better insights uh, into this by just looking at very, very simple measures. And the fact that you looked at more than one variable is a robustness check. It's like looking at the elephant from different sides to realize that it really is an elephant or not. And that's why you do <laughs> not just one thing, but two or three uh, different uh, types of things. Very, very promising work. And uh, you and other, other colleagues at ISB will continue to work on this to monitor what we call the corporate health and uh, absolutely. involve many students in this as well. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, absolutely. This should be very interesting for students. They can get their hands on the data. They can create a new index. And this is going to be uh, because I can see many other attempts uh, trying to do something similar in coming years. So we will be ahead of the curve in this, uh, this attempt. So students should be getting good exposure. Okay, this is very exciting. I look forward to more results and more uh, insights from you. So thank you very much today for showing uh, what your early attempts were able to show us. Thank you, Apoorva. Thank you, thank you Bhagwan for the opportunity. See you.